Good morning, good morning, good morning, Facebook, good morning, YouTube, good morning, good afternoon, good morrow, whatever time this message reaches you. I pray that it finds you in good health. May the peace of God be with you. Uh, this morning I'm not broadcasting at, over at LOR Radio because Bishop Basil Anderson is out of town. And so I'm just going live on Facebook and then I will upload it to my YouTube channel. Uh, uh, my YouTube channel is Flo Changajita, F-L-O. So if you want to share the message, go to my YouTube page, like, subscribe, and share. Thank you. So this morning's message is entitled, Joyful. Joyful. That's the title of the message. Uh, you know, I, 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 I'm amazed at, uh, <laughs> I have to say, God's divinity. Um, he's such a faithful God, so omniscient. He knows all things. You know, I keep expressing that because I, I, see, I feel his omniscient love. You know, the love that he gives to us, knowing who we are. You know, knowing that while we were yet in sin, he loved us, right? Loved us into the place and space that we ought to be in. And so, um, you know... Uh, uh, last night I, I was at a, a, an iftar celebration and uh, the, 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 uh, it's the dinner uh, during Ramadan that um, breaks the fast right so um, it was hosted by a Brooklyn Bar President uh, Antonio Reynoso so as, as we were there you know they honored some women and, 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 and some uh, organizations and some men and, uh, and then dates were given out and water you know for those who are fasting to break the fast and then there was a prayer the men were separated from the women you know um, during prayer uh, afterwards though after the prayer everyone was ushered so whether you were Muslim or not, all were ushered uh, into this room where a table, tables were spread with feasts of, there were breads, uh, salads, fruits, nuts, um, pastries, uh, crepe, uh, crepe cakes stuffed with cream, just lots of rich foods, waters, and some small bottles of soda, so some sweets to drink as well. And all were welcome to join. And you know, uh, it was like family. Even if no one knew you, you were welcomed, you know. And um, it was just a wonderful time. And so, you know, I've been thinking about this before and is, how's our prayer life? I remembered um, Pastor Blake had done a week of prayer um, where we would pray three times per day. And, uh, you know, we see many cultures praying a lot. And as Christians, we're supposed to pray a lot too. Uh, sometimes though we find ourselves and it's just like a, a gentleman was saying uh, I watched this uh, I don't know if you all saw it where uh, I think it was I don't I don't remember where the news uh, reporter was uh, located however he was reporting that there were tornadoes that was going to hit Mississippi and other states, the one where 20 people died and may their souls rest in peace. And, we, you know, I've prayed for the families of those who lost loved ones, those who lost their homes, those who may have lost pets, you know, those who were affected, the family and friends that were affected. And so this reporter, while he was on the air, he was trying to stress the seriousness of what was happening. 
And then he simply paused and prayed in the name of Jesus for the safety of the people. He was like, he needed Jesus to help them. And, you know, so they interviewed him and there were folks, he said that, said because he paused and prayed on the air, that it was such a short prayer, just Jesus helped them, um, but it caught folks' attention. And there were folks who said when he prayed, that they took it seriously. They said, oh, I simply must get to my basement, or I must get in the bathtub, or, you know, seek cover. And so, I said that to say that sometimes we think, the Bible says we ought to stay in continuous prayer, meaning continuous communication with God. And I say, you know, sometimes folks say to us, you know, you're walking on the street or you call us, you call a friend or someone calls you and they say, oh, pray for me. And you said, okay, sure I will. Or, you know, you, you're traveling, you're driving, you're walking and folks say, pray for me. And you're like, sure, I will. And you know, like shortly after you leave their presence, you forget. I don't know about anyone, but that used to happen to me. On my way to church, many Sabbath mornings, Folks would see me and say, pray for me when you get to church. And you know, this was in the beginning when I first started going to church, when I gave my life to the Lord totally and completely. And folks would say, pray for me. And I was like, yes, I will. I would get to church but sometimes, listen, a block away. And I'd forget. Then my babies were younger. So... By the time somebody is like a little fussy or something or whatever, because I, I had a baby, um, and it was like, okay, um, no, she was a toddler by then, um, but it would be, it would go out my head. I'd totally forget. And then during the week, either when I'm on my way to work or, you know, sometimes just random, I'd say, wait a minute. I never remembered. Sometimes it was the following week when the person would say, well, did you pray for me? And I had to be honest with them to say, no, I forgot. I really would be honest and say, no, I forgot. And I remembered, you know, that just made me start saying, let me just pray with you now. And so on my way to church, I just stop and pray with folks who would ask, can you pray for me when you get to church? And I would say, listen, I might not remember, but how about we just pray now? And so, you know, we don't have to pray long, elaborate prayers. There are times when we may need to stay on our bellies before God, right? But there are times. I, I found, for me personally, my when I see the answers like this, are times when I'll say, Daddy, handle it. Jesus, it's yours. That was my prayer. I just cast the cares upon the Lord and give it to Him. Because the ones I find that I labor with are, it usually takes a little while longer for me to see the results. But as I said this morning, at a, it's communion morning, so get your bread, your matzah, Get your grape juice, right? Just get it ready. So it is communion. And the title of communion is Joyful. And I know I started talking about the dinner and prayer. But stay with me. Let's walk this journey. So something that I reflected on, though, like while I was there and after, was the faces, the countenance, and the demeanor of the folks who were praying, you know, who were fasting, right? Their countenance, their faces, their demeanor. Like, you know, when you're fasting and you're hungry, you've gone a long day, some go to work, you go to work, you're not eating. But can I tell you, the folks, they were dressed well. Their hair was combed and coughed. 
And so I couldn't help but remember the scripture where Jesus said, it, it's, it's taken from Matthew 6 and 16, and the Bible tells us that we're blessed reading the word of God, we're blessed hearing the word of God being read. We're, oh, let me just say before I read that, oh, thank you, Lord. Bishop, wherever you are, I pray you're having a wonderful time, you and your spouse, and happy birthday, Danette, girl, happy birthday to you. I know you usually celebrate your week, so enjoy your week, enjoy the year, and may the blessings of the Lord continue to uh, be upon you. That being said, so we're going to read this knowing that we're blessed reading, we're blessed hearing the word being read. And when we apply the word of God to our lives, what? We can only see the manifestation of his blessings in our lives. Glory to God. And so Jesus said in Matthew 6, 16 through 18, And when you fast, don't make it obvious as hypocrites do, for they try to look miserable and disheveled. So people will admire them for their fasting. I tell you the truth, that it is only the only reward they will ever get. But when you fast, comb your hair and wash your face. Then no one will notice that you're fasting except your father, who knows that what you do in private. And your father who sees everything will reward you. You know, I... Listen, I don't know what anyone's condition was. Matter of fact, I just didn't know. I was invited as a board member, right? So, but let me tell you something. I, I totally forgot that they were fasting. Honestly, till I saw them bring out the dates and the water. And, you know, water was there for folks to drink. Because I didn't see folks being angry. I didn't see folks acting mean. Everyone was so welcoming. They welcomed me like I was part of the family, you know. And so it was just such a beautiful thing. And I thought, this was what I, I thought. I thought, when we're prayed up, when we stay with our minds on Christ, when we stay prayed up, how beautiful that is. And I remembered uh, I was having a conversation with a gentleman and I said to him, you know, I do pray. However, I pray to Christ. I pray to Jesus specifically. I did say Jesus. And I was genuinely surprised at his response because his response was, <laughs> as long as you stay in prayer, that's what matters. And, you know, I was like, wow. That wasn't the response I expected. Honestly, it was not. You know, I, I, I thought he would have took it, taken it in a, a, in a different direction. So the fact that he never took it in a different direction, but just simply said, well, as long as you pray. I was like, wow. <laughs> I tell you, um that was really beautiful that was really beautiful and i believe that as christians as children of god our and and, and I, I say this because it all ties in with the communion um that our demeanor and our countenance ought to reflect god no matter what we're going through and i'm not going to say every day is all sunshine Clearly not, because yesterday, what happened? It was bleaky, there was, I got home late, you know, I had a, a couple of things to do, I went out early, and it was a bleaky day, there was like mist, and then at, in the, during the night, there was just simply fog, and it was cool, about a lot cooler. But the thing is, I totally enjoyed the entire day, you know, with everything that had to be done. We... Not because of self. I could have complained. I could have said, well, it's colder than I thought it was going to be. And, you know, uh, I, I, the first place I went, uh, I was a little disappointed. Something happened. 
but you know, we can't let the disappointments stop us. We can't let the disappointments make us angry because then what are we projecting, right? How are we saying that we're reflecting God? Who's God to us? Is he God of our lives? And, you know, I just said, I think that wasn't for me. It just wasn't the time or the place. And we know that all things work together for good to those who, you know, you can complete the rest. So, to today's communion, as I said before, and the scripture I got, I actually got it on March 19th of this year. Let me read to you. Um, let me tell you, as I reread the scripture, I just thought, how amazing is God? God is truly omniscient, sons and daughters of God. Because I experienced the scripture. I did. And so the scripture reads, it's taken from Nehemiah 8, 8 and 10, verse 10. And Nehemiah continued, Go celebrate with a feast of rich foods and sweet drinks and share gifts of food with people who have nothing prepared. This is a sacred day before our Lord. Don't be dejected and sad, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. Don't be dejected and sad. On God's sacred day, whether we're fasting or we're taking communion, we ought to be joyful. On God's sacred day, don't be dejected and sad, for the joy of the Lord is what? Your strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. So when we don't have joy for ourselves, when we go through difficulties, trying times, we ought to... Uh, Rely on the joy of the Lord. That's where we get our strength from. Because, you know, when we go through difficulties, when we go through sad times, when we go through, listen, I've, I've had some disappointing things happen. And when, when we give in to it, when I, let me just speak about myself. Now, when I gave in to the disappointment, not even talking about yesterday, Yesterday, I didn't give in to it because by that time, the Lord had already brought me through another situation that, you know, came about and I was disappointed and I kind of sunk into it a little bit. I did. <laughs> I really did. I sunk into it a little bit. But when I sunk into it, I felt drained. I had to quickly say, nope, not going there. Not going there in Jesus' name. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. Because there's too much to do for God. There's too much to do for God. Listen, there's a world out there that needs to know truth. Their people, their families, their friends, their loved ones. Strangers even. And it, as I keep saying... We're all related. We're all of the human race. We know who our progenitors are. We all descended from Adam and Eve. So, hey, somewhere there's a gene. Somewhere. It may have petered out, but there's a gene. There's a link to God be the glory. So, uh, and let me read you the other scripture that I was given as well on that day. It's Isaiah 12, verses 2 through 5. And it reads thus. See, God has come to save me. See, God has come to save you. Okay, it's communion morning. And he's here to save you. I will trust in him and not be afraid. The Lord God is my strength and my song. I got those two scriptures on the same day. God is our strength and our song. He is my strength and my strong. He has given me victory. He has given you the victory. Hallelujah. Glory to God. With joy you will... Now listen. With joy you will drink deeply from the fountain of salvation. With joy. With what? 
Which, uh, good morning, good morning, uh, Tanette. Good seeing you, sis. Hallelujah, glory to God. With joy, you will drink deeply from the fountain of salvation. With joy, you will take communion. With joy, you will fast. With joy, whatever you're going through, with joy. Whose joy? Your joy? No, because when we're going through the going through, I, I'll, I'll be the first to testify. When you're going through anything, you know, and you're tired, you don't feel like I'm not good. I've said this before. I used to be very reactive. And when I get tired, I would get really cranky. You know how babies get cranky when they're tired and want to sleep? I always used to wonder until I'm like, wait, adults do it as well. It's, 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 it's like an inerrant part of us, right? Because when babies are young, you would figure they want to sleep. Toddlers, they want to sleep. I remember Reverend Love, <laughs> her grandson. I don't remember. If, I think it was Saya who said, oh, his eye, his eye is tired. <laughs> He's not tired. Just the eye is tired. The thing is, you know, we, we, we had joked about that. And, you know, having children, and I remembered, I remembered putting my baby to sleep, my first one. Uh, that was, you know, the first time I noticed it. I put in my first one to sleep, and he wants to sleep. He keeps opening, you know, and I'm singing him the lullaby. You know, my mom taught us, and she sang the Spanish song over, Duermete me niño, duermete mi amor. Duermete brazo de mi corazón. Este niño o niña lindo o linda. Que no son noche. Quiere que no te lleva a pasar en coche. And so, I, I, you know, I would sing that. That was sung over me. I sang that over my kids. She sang that over her grandkids. So, and here it was. I'm singing. And so he's going to sleep. And I'm like, yeah, he's going to sleep. And I'm saying, I would stop singing. And, and one eye would open. And then, and, and then he's up again. And then now he's fighting the sleep. So I'd say all that to say, I don't know what it is. But I used to just get cranky whenever I, I was tired. And it was so much to the point where um you know they would uh say my kids now when they, they would say mom you need to sleep you know they would notice it and now i laugh it's 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 a difference because i had to give that to the lord because i was like what is that you know and so as a child of god um what is our purportment what's our demeanor what what does our countenance look like you know um and it's not that you can't be honest with you know i read um recently that there is a country uh oh i don't is it amsterdam there's a no it's not amsterdam it's somewhere in i think it's somewhere in sweden uh, Sweden is a country, I think it's a city. Anyway, where they say the people live long. I was just reading this a, a little while back, this year though. Um, the people live long, and so they were interviewing, and one of the things they found out was that people were honest. They were honest about their feelings. So you know how when we ask, how are you doing? And we're like, fine. Or some folks will ask just for asking sake but they don't really want to hear your problems they just want you to say you're fine but it was said that people listened they asked and they made time to listen just in case and people were honest so if they were doing good even though they you know they would have their smile on their face and that so they knew that people were honest when they said, yeah, I'm fine, all is well. But if they all wasn't well, even though they were smiling, and, and that was the other thing, they said smile, smile. The Bible tells us this, a merry heart do it good as a medicine. And so it wasn't that they weren't going through difficult moments, and but they got the opportunity to, to speak it. And, and, and something I, I've learned from counseling and, 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 and just and, and being a counselor 
is that when you allow folks to speak, sometimes you don't even have to say anything. Right there, the solution. I talked about this, you know, even with myself. I've discovered that. And so, God wants us to, with joy, so with joy we take communion, with joy we drink from the fountain of salvation. In that wonderful day, you will sing, thank the Lord, praise his name, tell the nations what he has done, let them know how mighty he is, sing to the Lord, for he has done wonderful things, make known his praise around the world. So this is what we ought to do during communion, during fasting, during whatever it is we're going through. And it doesn't mean that when you're going through, you don't say, we acknowledge it, we say, yes, but God, this is what I'm going through. But I know my God will see me through. Oh, I've had some moments. I've had some moments. There were moments when the praise didn't even want to come out. Did not want to pass my lips. But I had to force myself to. I had to be disciplined to uh, believe in God. That his words cannot fail and his words will not falter. And so let me continue. So we ought to, as I said, be joyful whether we, we're fasting or we're taking communion. Right? The Bible says on solemn sacred occasions our countenance ought not to be dejected and sad but ought to be joyful. When we're dejected and sad during solemn during sacred occasions we're being a reproach we're being a discredit we're being a dishonor to God and so for the the Muslims their fasting it's a month a holy month for them where they're fasting and then feasting, right? It, it culminates with feasting at the end of it. But it's a month of spiritual growth, right? Where they pray, they fast, and spend time with their families. Um, this week overlaps, though, for the Muslims, the three great faiths, Muslims, Jews, and Christians. And so, for the Jews, they rid their homes of yeast, anything leavened bread. So leavened breads have yeast. And the reason is they're doing this in preparation for Passover. And yeast is considered sin. You know, the Bible tells us about the yeast, not, not the bread, the bread of life, but the yeast that, 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 that causes um, sin. Right, yeast is 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 uh, refers to sin in the Bible, because yeast is the thing that. Do you know that if you have yeast on your table and you're making, you know, or on your 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 the roller the whatever flat surface you you need the bread on when you're making bread because it's needed to make the bread rise, and so it's like. It, it, it makes you puffed up, right? Pride, right? It's like yeast. And so, well, it's not a message for that today, but the, the, hear this. If there's a little yeast on the table and you weren't aware, you may not see it. Anything it comes in contact with. For the yeast actually eats out the, the, the sugar and then produces carbon dioxide. So I just, when you think about it, sin inflates our egos and causes us to be prideful. And that's why the Bible said pride goes before a fall, right? But wasn't a message for today, but it is now. So just saying, so um, for the Jews, they get rid of every everything that has even the utensils are, are they don't use the same utensils that they would use uh, regularly so um, the they purchase food that says uh, kosher for Passover 
So anyway, and this is the time when they spend reading from the Haggadah and um, during the Passover Seder, and where they recount, they spend time with family as well, and recount where God has taken their progenitors from, right? Um, which is uh, Egypt, out of Egypt. And as Christians, we're taken out of spiritual uh, Egypt, right? Spiritual Egypt, I say, because we, and we've had our wilderness experiences as well. Um, for Christians, this week, uh, it's Holy Week, and uh, where you know, Holy Wednesday, Holy Thursday, Good Friday, because um, the 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 trial of Christ, the burial, uh, crucifixion, burial, and resurrection of Christ, which will be on Easter Sunday, and so it's 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 a high holy days for the three major religion all around, right? And so I couldn't help thinking though, are we just simply doing things out of tradition, out of culture, or what is our heart's posture is what I'm asking. Where is our heart in all this? Are we appreciating God for Him giving us His one and only begotten and beloved Son, right? To reconcile, to pay for our sins and our iniquity. I'm grateful. I'm truly grateful. I'm truly thankful. I'm thankful for growth, for learning daily. We, I learn and grow. And so, uh, here I, I just want to share with you this. In Exodus 12, 11 through 17, these are the instructions for eating this meal, and we're talking about the Passover. So just stay with me. Be fully dressed. Wear your sandals and carry your walking stick in your hand. Eat the meal with urgency, for this is the Lord's Passover. On that night, I will pass through the, excuse me, I'll pass through the land of Egypt. Sorry, excuse me. Hold on a second, let me get some water. I'll pass through the land of Egypt and strike down every firstborn son and firstborn male animal in the land of Egypt. I will execute judgment against all the gods of Egypt, for I am the Lord. But the blood of, uh, on your doorpost will serve as a sign, marking the houses where you are staying. When I see the blood, I will pass over you. And this plague of death will not touch you when I strike the land of Egypt. I don't know about anyone, but we should be saying hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Praise the Lord, right? We should be glorifying God right about now. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. This is a day to remember each year from generation to generation. You must celebrate it as a special festival to the Lord. So this is a festival to the Lord. Passover is actually a festival to the Lord. Now, what do you do at festivals? You rejoice, right? It's, 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 stay with me. Stay with me. Don't, don't, don't. Stay with me. Come on. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So, thank you, Lord. This is a law for all time. A law for all time. For seven days, the bread you eat must be made without yeast. On the first day of the festival, remove every trace of yeast from your ho homes. Anyone who eats bread made with yeast during the seven days of the festival will be cut off from the community of Israel. So, okay. On the first day of the festival and again on the seventh day, all the people must observe an official day for holy assembly. So, First day, there is a gathering. Last day, there is a gathering. And throughout, no yeast. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Now, it's so refreshing to know that Jesus is the one who removes our yeast from us. Isn't it? 
Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And so on the first day, uh, oh, I, I read, uh, and this, no work of any kind may be done on these days except in preparation of food. Celebrate. Do you hear this? Celebrate this festival of unleavened bread, for it will remind you that I brought you, you, your forces out of the land of Egypt on this day. This festival will be a permanent law for you. Celebrate this day from generation to generation. Then I go down to verses 21 through 23. Then Moses called all the elders of Israel together and said to them, Go pick out the lamb or young goat for each of your families and slaughter the Passover animal. Drain the blood in a basin. Then take a bundle of hyssop branches and dip it in the blood. Brush the hyssop across the top of the sides of the door frames of your houses. And no one may go out the door until morning. For the Lord will pass through the land to strike the Egyptians. But when he sees the blood on the top sides of your frames, the Lord will pass over your home. He will not permit the death angel to enter your house and strike you down. It's a wonderful time. We're in the high seasons where three major religions overlap. And when you belong to Christ, you've got to rejoice. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. So, Jesus, our Lord and Savior, he partook of Pesach or Passover when he was on earth. As a matter of fact, his last meal was the Passover meal or the communion meal. Are there any coincidences with God? I say not. Not at all. Now, let me read to you Luke 27, 7 through 13. Now, the festival of unleavened bread arrived, and the, when the Passover lamb is sacrificed, the festival, festival of unleavened bread arrived, when the Passover lamb is sacrificed, Jesus sent Peter and John ahead and said, Go and prepare the Passover meal so that we can eat it together. So here we see Jesus sending them to prepare for the Passover meal of which he would partake of. Where do you want us to prepare it? They asked him. He replied, As soon as you enter Jerusalem, a man carrying a pitcher of water will meet you. Follow him. At the house he enters, say to the owner, The teacher says, Where is the guest room where I can eat the Passover meal with my disciples? He will take you upstairs to a large room that is already set up. That is where you should prepare our meal. They went off into the city and found everything, just as Jesus said, and prepared the Passover meal there. Here we see the lamb slain. The Passover lamb, Jesus, who was about to be slain in the physical for the sins of the world, getting ready to partake in the Passover Seder. And so in Luke 15, 20, the same Luke, verse 15 says, And he said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat Passover with you, before I suffer. We have communion, sons and daughters of God. We have communion because of Christ. We have communion because of the Passover lamb. We have communion. Good morning. Happy Holy Thursday, Reverend Love. Danette, did you hear when I was... Everyone, make sure you wish Danette happy birthday. Today's her birthday. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And so in verse 20 of, of Luke 22, we hear Jesus saying this, this cup, so he took the cup and he said, this cup is the new covenant of my blood, which is poured out for you. So he was bringing them into a truth. I mean, what a moment that had to be where the Passover lamb, the one that causes death to be pat to pass over us, 
was going to party. Ooh, I don't know. I'm telling you. Ooh, I keep saying, I know some of you get it. And some people may say, well, why is she harping over certain things? But okay, I pray that the Lord open the eyes of our understanding, all of us. Because he wants us to walk in truth. The Bible says, beloved. Do you know how wonderful it is to walk in truth? That's what God wants us to walk in. His truth. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And so, um, when the children of Israel were in Egypt, it was the blood of the Lamb for those who were in the confines of their homes, right? And under the covering of the blood, they were protected. They were protected from death. You know, the Bible says, and I, you know, I realize uh, what I've seen, uh, what was it called? The, the Ten Commandments uh, with Moses, with Charlton, Charlton Eston. And, uh, when the the children of Israel were going through um, after the the waters rose for them to cross over, uh, we see, I guess, it's poetic licensing. We see people on crutches, people being carried on stretcher, but the Bible says not one was ill, not one person was feeble, not one person was ill not one person it didn't matter what their ages were I, I think many times we, we 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 tend to neglect the Word of God but the Word of God will never fall to the ground the Bible says before one jot or one till and I never understood that till you see the Hebrew the words of God in Hebrew then you realize what a jot and a tittle really is Nothing, no part of God's word will fail. No part of God's word will ever fail. And so we can rely on that. However, many times we tend to live our lives and we, we speak what we see, we hear. You know, I've, I, I grew up and I've heard and I still hear people. I remember, I, and I, I'm not going to lie, I did laugh at this young lady she turned 30 and she she was uh doing twerking and uh it was a caucasian lady she was twerking and uh she came she was in the shower she came out dripping she had on her robe she wasn't naked she wasn't um you know she was decent she was not indecent at all however she was just talking about that it hit her that she turned 30 and her body was going down the drain now and and, and so we, we we see things happening but we've also when we see folks who age and the more they age the stronger they get like Caleb and others but I'm talking in present time and we see people and, and, and it becomes like an anomaly but it's not because the word of God actually says, as we grow older, so do our, as we get, as our days increase, so does our strength. So, who are we believing? God or, you know. So, I'm just saying. So, anyway, wasn't part of the message. But, you know, I love the gems that the Lord gives us. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And so, here it was, the children of Israel when they crossed over where, on the other side of the Red Sea, they weren't feeble. They weren't sick. They took communion and they were healthy. Jesus' last meal was the Passover, the communion meal. And so Jesus partook of this. When you and I take the communion meal, sons and daughters of God, we must trust God because of the redemptive 
covenant blood of Christ Jesus that death will not come to us but will pass over as it did in ancient times. So today as we take communion let us acknowledge the following. The Passover lamb was to be chosen and set apart on the 10th day of the first month of Nisan or April, March, April, Nisan. Exodus 12 and 3, that's what it says. Now, was it fulfilled? Yes. On the 10th day of Nisan, Jesus rode into Jerusalem on the foal of the of a donkey and was hailed as king of the Jews Luke 19 35 through 38 see the other thing is um, the lamb was inspected for four days until the 14th day of the month for any spot or blemish that might disqualify it in a sacrificial lamb we see this Jesus in the temple on the 14th day being what examined because the lamb had to be examined there had to be no fault and then the, the the when the priest on the Yom Kippur and holy day or in regularly on, on, on Yom Kippur and holy day what would happen was when you bring the spotless lamb so you and I you think about that we have to bring that spotless lamb after the priest examines the lamb then on Yom Kippur the priest would do the sack he would kill the lamb but before that you and I would have to place our hands on the head of the lamb like thus place our hands on the head of the lamb to transfer our sins into the body of the lamb and then the lamb was slain regularly we would do the killing ourselves but first the priests would have to examine the lamb there had to be no spots so i want to say today when we're taking communion yeah and I, I know that a lot of times when folks are taking communion they said um if you're if you're found guilty you know, no god's not examining us who that's why the but jesus said as many times as we do this do this in remembrance of me Who's being examined for us? Christ. In whom we live, move, and have our being. And he has been found spotless. You think about it. None of us would ever pass that test. Not one of us would ever pass the test. In Christ, there was no sin. And he committed no sin. How about us? Well, the Bible says we were born in sin. You know, when you think about it, think about this. For those of us, those of you who who are around babies, pay attention. You don't have to teach your little toddler to lie or to deceive you. But they sure, as sure as sure, will do it. You could live the most holy life, the most precious life, They'll come to you. You tell them, don't eat any cookie before. <laughs> you know, I saw my little one uh, last night do something. They try to trick you, to deceive you. Uh, it's a situation that, that, that happened last night. It was just so cute, though. She was, she was just so cute. I'm now, I'm not talking about my daughter. Um, and and let me tell you something. <laughs> they come to you. Chocolate around the lips. Spots on the clothing. Did you take the cookie? No. And we've seen it on 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 the, the for the parents who film their children. We've seen it on, on the internet. But you know it has happened at home. It may not be that. I remembered, you know, my daughter, when she was little, she used to throw the milk into the sink. 
right? She 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 would throw the milk into the sink. She 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 didn't like. She doesn't drink milk. You know, it's been years, but she doesn't drink milk um, for years now. I should have known and paid attention then when she was a toddler. I was just thinking, look, but she would tippy toe and try to throw it first she threw it in the toilet but you know then you see the milk and then I'll color the milk and then when she realized you know you can see it in the sink no she didn't like that so she's like no 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 strawberry for her no strawberry you know I used to uh, mix it with the strawberry syrup and 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 so but I tell you do you teach them this no nobody teaches them because the Bible said we're born in sin and shaped in iniquity but the Bible tells us that the lamb the Passover lamb Jesus he was inspected he was given the, the he was inspected from head to toe and there was found no fault in him did Pilate not say no fault tried to get the people not to select Barabbas but they selected Barabbas anyway in whom there was many faults so we see the fulfillment hallelujah glory to God and so we know that the lamb was also the Passover lamb that the families right would um, come together and they would publicly slay that lamb the same happened with Christ we've seen this and so for us we know that only the blood of the Passover lamb can save us his blood heals his blood refreshes his blood revives his blood restores and his blood sustains hallelujah glory to God it is the shed blood of Yeshua Jesus our Passover lamb that has made payment for our sins and our iniquities and so we ought to be joyful we ought to be grateful we ought to be thankful and when we have our hearts posture is a is in the posture of gratitude when our hearts posture is thankful thankfulness when our hearts posture is gratefulness then our hearts will be joyful and the joy of the Lord is our strength I am telling you you may be going through a difficult moment you may be suffering loss you may be aggravated you may have been lied to you may have been deceived you may have been you listen you may have been taken disadvantage of you may have been abused you may have just gone through some a whole lot of mess you may even be going through an illness but listen up take communion as a child of God because the blood of Jesus and take it joyfully it's not about what we're going through it's who God is to us and for that we ought to give thanks for that we ought to be joyful hallelujah glory to God can I tell you I am I feel a little tired but God because it's been weeks and every day is something going to meetings going to different things and then you know you have to juggle family life in the whole mix of it right yeah but God his joy is my strength for real for real truly when I woke up this morning I kind of sort of wanted to go back to bed however by the time I prayed and gave thanks ooh, I started to feel recharged yes I, I'm being serious I'm being honest too so it's not that we don't go through it's not that we don't feel but we must trust God the Bible says our praises our weapons our praises he inhabits our praises and now when God comes into our praise can I say tiredness has to fly out the window doesn't it sickness has to go out the window doesn't it right 
Whatever it is that you're going through has to fly out the window when God comes into your praise. So when you're joyful and when you're taking the communion, communion meal and we're taking the Passover lamb, uh, the body of the lamb, the bread of life, the cup of blessings, the blood of the lamb, come on, then we ought to be joyful because his joy gives us strength. Hallelujah, glory to God. And so... We are to be thankful, hallelujah, glory to God, as we eat his body and as we drink his blood. We do so joyfully. We rejoice and have confident expectation in the Passover lamb. He did it already. It's already a done deal. Hallelujah, glory to God. And so he alone rids us of the yeast which represents sin. And gives us a better life. Because none of us can get rid of sin. On our own. You ever try to get rid of sin? It's like. You ever seen. <laughs> this just came to mind. Have you ever seen like you have a red spot. Like an ink spot. Fell on. that, Like you see me wearing white. And so let's say there was an ink spot. Right? And you're trying to take it out. All you see. What happens? It starts spreading. It spreads and it spreads. And, and, and before, I, there are some great um, uh, uh, spot removers now. I have had to throw away whole outfits because these uh, weren't around at that time. But thank God there are solutions now that can help. It's different, you know, if the, the, the clothing is white. But uh, what if it's if if it's on uh, maybe something that you can't use bleach on, right? Blood stains, grass stains, pen ink, all these things. Now you know there are solutions to all of this. So glory to God! I thank God for the innovation, right? <laughs> Hallelujah! Thank you, Lord. But it is the blood of the Passover lamb. Only that, because sin. You know what sin does. When we try to get rid of sin for ourselves, we just sit, dig in, we just get into wor worse situations. So unless we allow the Passover lamb to be the one to remove it for us, it becomes futile. So let me close with this. We're going to take the, the, the bread now if you already have your bread and we're having the birthday communion we're really celebrating today i don't know about you but as it's a joyful occasion for me hallelujah glory to god and so the bible says in first corinthians 11 24 through 25 the bible says the word of god says and jesus it says, and gave, so you have to read the rest of it before, but this is Jesus. He gave thanks to God for it, then broke it in pieces and said, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. So as we partake of the bread of life, the body of Christ, may we remember, may we do it joyfully, and may we remember what Jesus went through. And, and, and as you go to church, and I know, you know, the, the depiction of the crucifixion, of the suffering, down the Via Dolorosa, down the way of suffering, the pathway, they, they, Jesus was beaten with stripes that stripped the skin off his back. It's yuck to read. I, I mean, I don't think anyone has really fully depicted what he looked like, the Bible said, his face was not no longer recognizable. He was the he was kicked in his face. He, his beard was plucked out. He was kicked. He was spat on. He had no skin on his back. His back was exposed. The flesh was exposed. The bone. This is what, and so when we eat, when we take the unleavened bread, when we eat this, and you see the the stripes. You see the stripes. You see the piercings. You see the burns. The wounds. By his stripes, you and I are healed. 
Hallelujah. Hey, glory. Praise the name of the Lord our God. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We give thanks as we partake of your body, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. We thank you for taking from us our sins and our iniquity and our sicknesses and our pains. Our griefs and our sorrows. We thank you for healing broken hearts. Healing wounded emotions. Healing minds of mental maladies. Depression, anxiety, is a bipolar, uh, schizophrenia, whatever the mental malady may be. Thank you for healing bodies of sicknesses, God, because of the body of Christ. Because in his body, he bore every form of every disease, heart disease, COVID, arthritis, chronic diseases acute diseases for it was not the will of God that man should die when he you Abba created us originally but when sin entered death entered but Jesus you gave up his life for ours that we might have life and have it more abundantly so this morning in confident expectation we eat unto life Lahaim Hallelujah Ego take and eat of oh, Jesus hallelujah praise your name hallelujah glory to God hallelujah thank you father hallelujah oh mercy hallelujah thank you hallelujah glory thank you Lord hallelujah praise your name Jesus oh hallelujah glory thank you Lord hallelujah thank you hallelujah mm. Hallelujah. In the same way, continue reading, he took the cup of wine after supper, saying, This cup is a new covenant between God and his people, an agreement confirmed by my blood. Do this in remembrance of me as often as you drink it. And so, Abba Father, we thank you for the blood of Jesus that paid for our sins and our iniquities, that washes us whiter than snow. And your word tells us that the life of the flesh is in the blood. So as we drink the cup of blessing, the blood of Jesus, may his blood flow through our veins, cleansing our veins of all impurities. Hallelujah! Glory! Mm. Jesus, from the crowns of our heads to the soles of our feet, in Yeshua's mighty name, we thank you for the Passover lamb during this time, during this season, this high holy season of blessings. We joyfully, hallelujah, receive in Jesus' name, drink. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I pray that you are blessed and know that. Go forth because you're rejuvenated. You've been invigorated by the blood of Jesus, by the body of Christ, the bread of life. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Oh, run on. Yeah, we can run through troops and leap over walls. Hallelujah. Mm, praise the Lord God. This is a wonderful day. The Son of Righteousness has arisen with healing in His wings. Go for it. Enjoy your healing. Be sustained. Hallelujah. Be revived. Be refreshed. Be renewed. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord our God. Be healed in Jesus' name. And out. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. And for His sake. Amen. 
Danette, enjoy your birthday. Reverend Love and all the rest who, uh, Reverend Lee and all the others, uh, Pastor Blake and uh, Pastor, who, Pastor Thornton, uh, I know you've been so busy. A lot is going on. Pastor Jerome, I pray for your wife uh, and all the others. Pastor Monroe's. I know it's a busy, busy, busy time, you know, as you go for it and working. Uh, it's, it's a lot for all my uh, Jewish friends. Hag, uh, Pesach, Sameach, Ramadan, Mubarak, Shahid, uh, Mo, Manzur, and all the others. Um, Mr. Mayor, Mr. Uh, Bar President, and all my elected officials as you go for it. Um, busy, busy time. Uh, uh, Assembly Member Monique, uh, I know, you know, traveling back and forth, funerals, and, and, and it goes on. And so for those who are Christians, for those who are children of God, take the communion meal. It will strengthen you. It will keep you refreshed, revived, renewed, restored, and healed, and sustained in Jesus' name and for his sake. Know that your love, 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 and God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit loves all of us so much more than we can ever imagine. His love is omniscient. It's eternal. It's unfathomable. It's immeasurable. Enjoy. Basking it. Bishop. I pray you're basking in the love of God where you and your wife are, but both of you are basking in his love as you bask in each other's love as well. Uh, hallelujah. Glory to God. And um, remember, for those who are in New York, um, Reverend Lee will be having uh, a, a, a Love Thy Neighbor walk on Sabbath. Yeah, this Sabbath, Saturday the 8th. So if you're free, if you can join her, and you want to reach out, you can call me um, because I'll, I'll get the exact location because I forgot to ask her the exact location before, but it just came to mind. So I just wanted to say that. Um, and uh, you can messenger me or if you have my phone number, you can reach out or if you have her number or she's also on Facebook. So you, if you are on Facebook, you can friend her and, uh, and reach out to her and ask her and join because we need to do this for the Lord. People need the Lord. And they need to know that they're loved more than anything else. And so have a blessed and a wonderful day, everyone. Thank you for joining. Thank you for sharing. Like and share. Remember, share the message. And I'm going to upload it to my YouTube channel. And please share from there with your friends who are not on Facebook as well. Because we all need to walk in God's truth and be blessed. Thank you.